Good afternoon students so welcome back to our online session of digital signal processing and application class In today's session we are going to concern with our discussion regarding the IIR concept that is infinite impulse response so by using the bilinear transformation we are going to see one problem so already we have done this problem in the previous session just take a quick recap of the previous class problem then we'll proceed ahead with the next concepts so using the bilinear transformation technique determine the h of z for the time is equals to 1 second and given h of s is equals to 2 by s square plus 3s plus 2 right according to the bilinear transformation what we will do it we will substitute s is equals to 2 by t 1 minus z power minus 1 by 1 plus z power minus 1 wherever s is there we will substitute this value so what is t value now t is 1 second so it is become now s is equals to 2 into 1 minus z power minus 1 by 1 plus z power minus 1 so this is the value we can substitute over there so 2 as it is what is s as it now this is the 2 2 square will be right 4 And this term S means this whole term square. We wrote it. Next is three multiply with two. Three twos are six. S values here we substituted and plus two we put it. Then we'll take the LCM cross multiply on upper side. A minus B whole square expand this end. A plus B into A minus B we did and we got M A square minus B square. And for this A plus B whole square A square plus B square plus two AB. After simplifying this whole term, we can at least at the end we can write A power minus one is one by A. So z power minus one I can write one by z. Z power minus two I can write one by z square. If I take the LCM for whole term, we can able to write that formula. So at the end we can write h of z as z square plus two z plus one by six z square minus two z. Right? By taking two common in the numerator and for the denominator we can cancel. Two will be outside. This will be z square left here two z and two taken outside will be one. Right? In the denominator as well take two common six z square minus two z. Let's see h of z. When we apply bilinear transformation for that particular signal. Next thing, specification of digital IIR low pass filter. We have talked about the filter station also as well. We have seen this concept theoretical part of it. Now we try to proceed. How do we design this by using this concepts of low pass, high pass filter, band pass filter, and band stop filter? By using these type of filters, how do we find what are the low pass filter characteristics? By using the approximation techniques, we can able to find out. So we use this approximation. How many types of approximation techniques we are using? We are using Butterworth approximation and we are using the Chebyshev approximation. So basically, to understand the Butterworth and Chebyshev approximation, we should know what are the steps we can design. So first approximation I am using as Butterworth approximation technique. So Butterworth approximation technique says that the Butterworth filter of an order n can be described with the magnitude square of its frequency responses given by the equation one. That means If you want to find this, suppose this is my Butterworth filter. See what kind of filter I'm using. I'm only using a lower component, right? In the graph itself, it shows that I'm using till omega c. That means this is nothing but low-pass filter. I'm using only omega c. This is my amplitude of it. That is nothing but the gain of it. H of j of omega. If you want to find magnitude response of that, it will be one. This is what one RMS value, right? So we will divide by root two. So 0.707, one by root two of that higher peak or value. Higher peak value, so that's what 0.707. From there, this is the ideal find value. This is the practical one. So, if you want to find the response of low pass filter, that if you want to find how do we get the order of the filter, that is given by h n of j omega of modulus square is equals to one by one plus omega by omega c whole power two n, right? What is this two n is indicate over n? N is nothing but order of the filter. Order of the filter we can obtain by using the Following properties, which can determine h of j omega of modulus square should always be one at omega is equals to zero. At that particular value of omega, the starting point needs to be zero. For the second value, h of j omega modulus square, if you are writing as in terms of critical frequency, that should be one by root of c. What is critical frequency? Critical frequency means at a particular point, the the value from where it is getting stopped the higher component. That means at a particular value, it allow only lower component, it, but after that it Resist the higher component. If such a situation, we got it. And that particular situation, if you want to find the property of it, that we can write in this form. What is one by root one one by root two? That is nothing but zero point seven zero seven. That the reason the graph we have written zero point seven zero seven at the critical value omega is equals to omega c. Now what is omega is equals to omega c? H of j omega of modulus. If you want to find square of it, that is called as maximally flat at an origin. It is nothing but it is going to be flat at the origin. If it is More automatically decreasing function of omega means we have to change the value of omega c. Clear? So as n gets larger, the the h of j of omega of n of modulus square approaches as ideal low pass frequency. That means that response is 100%, which is not 
possible in the practical, right? So the normalized transfer function is one of four, which the cutoff frequency is assumed to be one radian per second is equal to omega c. That is nothing but the ideal frequency of the omega c that we are considering when we are designing this particular frequency. As s is equal to j omega, right? This is nothing but our s domain, right? S domain, how will write real plus imaginary sigma plus j omega. But if I want to see only the omega value, omega how can I obtain? S by j. By substituting this, what I can write in the equation? I can write S by j whole power 2n because we are doing a modulus square, right? So if you take that particular response, the denominator of equation 2 is given as the information about the poles of transfer function. Always remember, whatever the term is there in the numerator, that is considered to be the zeros. And the terms which are there in the denominator, that is considered to be the poles. To design this particular part, the procedure for finding, that is considered to be the low pass filter we will consider only for low LHP side, side poles means nothing but we are using for left hand side and at end of that particular poles if you want to find out for that one we can able to obtain by using this particular phenomena clear next is design procedure for IR digital low pass filter so this is what actually we have seen we have seen design procedure when we want to design a particular frequency response by using the Butterworth approximation techniques we have to consider this particular formalization. That means whatever the h of j omega we do have that we can obtain by substituting its value. By substituting our that value we can able to write its frequency response. After that we can able to find its value by considering its magnitude response of that frequency by taking the low pass consideration then the high pass consideration. Clear? So this is just for an extra approximation technique. How we obtain? Next we want to design a digital IIR filter. What is IIR stands for? Impulse Invariant Response Filter. So how do we get that? In order to get that particular filters, we have to consider the response analysis. Response in the sense, we have to see the certain concept into consideration. First we have to find omega, then we have to find omega c, omega is nothing but frequency, then we have to find omega s, omega p. What is omega p? Frequency in the pass band, omega s, frequency in the stop band, a p. The gain of the pass band AS, gain of the stop band and T. That is nothing but the time period. Even we have to find order L. So N. Clear? So first thing, we have to choose whether it is, whether we are obtain, using a bilinear transformation or impulse invariant transformation. What is the difference of bilinear and impulse invariant students? In bilinear transformation, we are writing S is equals to 2 by T. 1 minus Z power minus 1 by 1 plus Z power minus 1. Whereas in Impulse invariant technique, whatever the values S we had, we are writing S is equals to 1 minus E power minus TP, Z power minus 1, right? This is the difference between your impulse invariant technique with the bilinear transformation. If you know both the difference, then it will be easy for you to just design that particular filter. So next, what is the first step? Design, we have to find frequency in the pass band, then frequency in the stop band, omega P, omega S, then we have to use N value, order of the filter. Then we can substitute that order of the filter in the given response. After substituting all the to find its characteristics. After knowing the characteristics.